his family like to call to order the October meeting of the Anderson County Charter Commission. And ask the clerk to please call the roll. Present. Present. Here. All but one is here. Seven. Okay. Thank you. Please stand for the prayer led by Commissioner Fritz and remain standing for the pledge led by Commissioner Mead. We just thank you, for the Lord, for this day and the many blessings you have given us. You have loved us and blessed us in so many ways, Lord, and we are so unworthy. And, Father, we just ask that you be with our country now, Lord, as we continue to struggle with this pandemic. Be with the ones who are ill and are suffering. And, Father, we know that you are still the great physician, and, Lord, and you are still in the healing business. And Father, we just ask now that you still be with this Charter Commission tonight as we uh, conduct the business of this county. Help us, Father, to do what is uh, best for this county, Lord, and uh, everything that we do. Forgive us when we fail you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes, August 2nd meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Vote. Motion by Commissioner Mead, second by Commissioner Fritz to approve the minutes of the August 2nd meeting. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed, use the like sign. Minutes are approved. Next item is the appearance of citizens. Seeing none, uh, we'll go to number seven. And Commissioner Mead had a request for a report or update on compiling charter and schedule for completion. Yeah, do we do, do the election of the chairman and vice chair? I was gonna make the motion that we keep the, the same people in those positions. Second. Okay, they, they updated. We have a motion and a second to maintain the chair and the vice chair it's, it's not necessary. They updated the, they had two agendas that came out and they, they did another one and Jay checked and said, Oh, we didn't need to? We didn't need oh. to do it. But, okay, fine. but if you think we do. I apologize for having the old agenda. No, mm -hmm. that's fine. I'm sure they'd like a vote of confidence and support. Uh, well, they just got, they just got, they got a motion and a second. Any any discussion? They've done a fine oh. job, and I think we should keep. Them. Agreed. All in favor? Let it be known with saying aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. The. Commissioner Mead, uh, you had a motion to deal with the scheduling. Yeah, I just, I just, I just wanted to get some kind of a of a timeline. I, I expected maybe the attorney was going to be here too, but just 
Yeah, j j just kind of a timeline for Harvard, because this is clearly, what we got right now is, is, is a great start, okay? I've got one that I've marked up a little bit. I got, you know, I do things. Yes, sir. The, um, um, and, uh, and, it, and what I would want would include us kind of going through this part that we have to review tonight. Uh, but did we, did, do we have any kind of a schedule um, that we that it's important for us to meet, and I, I and just a review of the of the of the, of the uh, statutory deadlines that we have ahead of us between now and when this has to go to the people in the in a general election. I'd be glad to help you with that. Yeah. Uh, what you're going to see for the next several months is exactly like tonight. We'll get a couple of chapters each month and we'll go through them, make changes, mm -hmm. recommendations. It's not set in concrete. If you digest it over the next couple of weeks and say, I'd like to change that, we'll come back and do it. I've told you that. We're going to get exactly what you want here. The deadline is May 22nd. We've got to have it turned into the election commission on May 22nd for the August uh, election. And that's when we'll put it to the voters. Um, after May 22nd, our work is not done. We'll have to educate the community and the law firm we've hired is going to help us with some materials to disseminate and distribute. Uh, but that's where we're at the next several months. We'll be um, getting a set of chapters in. We'll be going through there, answering some of the questions they have for us and uh, responding with our own comments until we get, I'm shooting myself for it to be knocked out in February or March at the latest. At that point we'll go through the actual um, draft with a fine tooth comb, make sure everybody is in agreement on it and have it well before that May 22nd deadline. That's where we're at. Anything else, sir? I got a question. Yes, sir. You said that uh, we're going to put it before the voters mm -hmm. and we're going to educate the voters. Is this, is this charter commission going to publicly endorse this commission? This no, you don't have to public endorse it, but I think uh, uh -huh. The educational phase is just telling people what's in it and what's different. As far as going out and saying, vote for this, no, sir. No, that's not uh, what we're you. asking. Thank you. Mm -mm. That's exactly the way I feel about yeah. it. But you'll have people ask you what's different in this form of government than what we've got. Now, my question along the same line, and, and I had it on the agenda as far as uh, our plan, and uh, that included the same thing that Commissioner Meade was talking about, but uh, do we need to, uh, as we go through these, to send, say, some of what we got here to the office holders for them to review? Absolutely. We promised that. We promised that early on that we would keep, keep them informed of anything that affects their offices. When should we do that? As we do the chapters? or uh, That's up to you. I think um, you may want to hold off and see how much we can get done before the end of the year. And then we'll have, uh, this is pretty rough, if you ask me. And um, uh, I think we're not quite there yet to where we're serious about this is what we're going to propose. Okay. Uh, but I, that's what we've always said, would we keep them abreast of anything that affects their offices? And I think that's only right. I'd like to think we could do it by middle of January. Yes, sir. February. Well, really the structure of county government is in the first couple chapters there. If you look at the table of contents and that's where uh, right. we want their feedback. There's not a lot changed. As you can see from the email from um, Mr. Owings, um, he is trying to do it exactly what we've told him, not too many changes in the way Anderson County does business. It's worked well here since 1802. And um, he's uh, highlighted that um, he wants to take advantage of the benefits of a charter government, but at the same time balancing that with doing exactly what we've done or to the most part what we've done so successfully over the past couple hundred years. Okay. Jay, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is going to be the wordage of how it's going to be listed on the ballot? 
it's statutory and it's really simple. Are you for the charter or are you against? And that's it. You don't get a chance to say this is, put a paragraph. It's just really straightforward. And so say they are for everything that's in here, it goes through. If they're against it, what do we do at that point if it fails? We're done. We're done. Okay, so we don't have to do anything else. We don't come back to the drawing board to make other changes. No, we're done. done. That's right. No, that's the end of it. Okay. Now, if it passes, that's a different story. Yeah. Mm. Steve, did you have any any other things on, on yours? Any well, I, I've got some comments as we go through these this, these chapters we've got. Oh, yeah, we do that on yeah. that. I just yeah. wondered on what. No, I mean, I, I just wanted to kind of get a, a, a feeling, and I think this is being broadcast. Uh, so that the public could understand that that's what we're working towards and that the the discussion for ever since this this charter commission was put together was that we wanted to, most things we wanted to not change at all there's a few places where there's some advantages of things we can do under a charter government that aren't allowed under a standard constitutional county government right. and uh and I'm sure we're, we want to make sure they understand what those advantages are uh, and that we take we take advantage of that part, but otherwise we keep things. The, I mean, the people were pretty clear; uh, they really don't want to change kind of government very much because it's been going pretty well. And so I think that's our duty to present something that will change as little as possible, uh, but but include those things that are required, and by all means make sure we comply totally with the state law regarding this uh, in format and content. Uh, to avoid the mistakes that were made by Shelby and Knox County. I mean, we don't want to spend eight years in court getting a charter approved after it pass if, it, if it passes in the election. You can tell by a lot of their notes that they've done a lot of research and uh, some of the questions they're asking us, um, it shows they've done a lot of research on these issues. Yep. Jay, I know you said there's not a lot of significant changes, at least in this section. That we, right. Um, as we go through this, could you highlight where there are, say, where you feel there are fairly significant yes, sir. changes? Yes, be glad so, to. Um, I, did, I have scanned it, but I have to admit I haven't gone through it in great yeah, detail. But I'll the, try to do that later on. But uh, This is uh, the first couple of chapters or the structure, basically, what we're looking at. Yeah, but I, I'd appreciate your thoughts. Yes, sir. Your thoughts. Be glad to. Thank you. Yeah, we? Oh, yeah one, one thing that if I could add, if I could ask right now, is the other thing is, is it, will part of the charter be the process that if it passes that we transition from the current government to the charter mm -hmm. uh, is that is that is that like a, is that a part of the charter the transition process i mean because he'll say we get this all together we get something that looks pretty good well, and the, it, way, and it, the uh, way it works is you can't actually transition over a period of time until mm -hmm. that effective date starts yeah. that effective date is the uh, I think September of 2026. It's it uh, it becomes effective the next county election, general election, mm -hmm. and uh, that won't take into consideration the off election of um, the property assessor and the municipalities and the presidential elections. It'll look at the next general election for the county, so that'll be August of August. 2026. Uh, but as far as phasing it in, there's really not the ability to, to do that. But there would be preparations to oh, be of ready. Of course. For the, mm -hmm. you know. I'm sure it would be highly talked about if it passes. All right. Any, any questions about that part before we go or turn it over to Jay? Any other questions, comments? Wrong. Okay, um, just a couple of questions here. Uh, I thought we had satisfied this, but I'll bring it to your attention. It's in Mr. Owings' um, email here. There was one option that we had of putting the mayor as the chairman of the county commission. I brought that to you before. Uh, along, that was the same night that I brought you the, um, um, actually the uh, true county administrator. 
that would operate the county. Um, that person would be appointed by the county legislative body. But as I recall, you didn't want the mayor um, being on <coughs> county commission or being the chairman. You wanted to keep it the way it is now. That's correct. So, so the way it is now um, is the way it will be put in the charter. And that the mayor is separate. She's in charge of the executive branch, and then county commission will be separate. Um, it'll lead to that's a much better for the checks and balances, I think. When you have the county mayor sitting as the chairman of county commission, it kind of clouds things. But anyway, it also reduces that veto power. Um, if you look at the statutes on that, so that is no. Uh, I'm moving on to the. The notes they ask uh, if there's anything else. Um, first thing I have, they put home rule in here. Um, not really for that. Uh, uh, we're under the the home rule is uh, a lot of times used when you talk about charters, but home rule is basically a municipal yeah. term for mm -hmm. uh, the cities and towns and. Um, I don't think it really applies here. The set of statutes that we're operating off of is the county charter. So uh, if you don't mind, I'll scratch that home rule provision right there. Yes. Although it is very similar, it's just not the set of statutes that we're working off of. Um, I think we've got everybody on there listed. Um, okay. Let's see, she had, please review the names listed. All names were taken from Anderson County Government's website for the Charter Commission. I think that's all correct. Um, you can see uh, they're not the pages are not numbered. He explains why, but uh, you can see the table of contents, how he's going to put this together, really the way it'll be set up. Of course, there'll be things added to it, but this is uh, the way it'll be set up in the charter. Then, all right, the. Um, I'm on page one of the charter draft. Does everybody, ha is that okay, the preamble? Yeah. You okay with that preamble? Okay, that came from, um, I think it's in the working yeah. copy that we worked on last November's where that was uh, first found. Okay. It, it uh, could be, it could be, I mean, I, there's what, just one thing here that I marked on my copy. Okay. okay. To adopt this charter of Anderson County or adopt this charter for Anderson County, to me, if I had written it, I would have said to adopt this charter for Anderson County instead of of Anderson County. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, and then, and then, then going into Article 1, I have a couple of comments. Okay. Um, let me look at the comments here from Sarah. Um, Okay, what she's saying is um, instead of going individually and granting the powers that are in TCA code, Title V, that talks about all the powers that the county government has, uh, Sarah believes that's somewhat dangerous because we may miss something. So she is under the impression that it's better to kind of do a generic phrase that basically the county has all powers of a charter government and all powers of a county government listed in Title V and throughout TCA. I think that's good. Instead of trying to capture each individual one, it's easy going through Title V and seeing the county powers, but if you, I mean, there's uh, county powers listed all the way, I know, through Title 67, the taxation statutes. It's better to capture it in a generic paragraph, and that's what she's done here. Um, she's just using it as a general grant of power to use one paragraph to capture all the powers for county governments. Yeah, pl plus that allows uh, us to still be in compliance if they change something. Of course. Exactly, because, because whatever it would the still be based on, on state law. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, we all know, uh, I think we all do, that the county is a public corporation. and She's just got that identified in 1.04. Uh, that means you all, we have all corporate rights. We have the ability to sue and do be sued. And that's the way it's sta stated in TCA. Um, now, this is a one I, I want to ask you. She's 
She actually, the legislative power of the county is vested in the Board of County Commissioners of Anderson County. She calls it the board. TCA refers to it as two terms, the county legislative body and the board of commissioners. So how do you want that? Um, she's going to be short, she wants to shorten that evidently. Um, but those are the two terms that um, you seem to find. Uh, if you, CTAS likes to use county legislative body because that is uh, statutory wording. But um, if you're all right with the board, then you know who that board is. But as we've seen around here, there's a lot of boards and there's a lot of committees. There's a lot of, there's more than one commission. Um, so that's her question here is what do you want to call the county legislative body? You know, she's asking not to put in every time she references the county legislative body, the board of county commissioners of Anderson County. She wants something shorter to put in. I understand that's a little bit tough uh, reading that repetitively over and over again. So uh, I think our choices are to leave it as board, uh, board of commissioners, uh, county legislative body, any of that. Uh, but it's up to you. Yeah. I think it's nice to be consistent with the, with the state's uh, code and stuff. But I do think that it's awkward to say the board of commissioners, board, you know, all this. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but I do note that in, in section 1.02, there where it says private and local affairs, it refers to just uh, the mayor of the county and the commission of Anderson County. Uh, this is before the term board has been defined. Mm -hmm. And so in any case, if I think in any case, that needs to say the, the mayor of Anderson County and the board of county commissioners. Okay. What? What they could do, yes, sir. I think I, I prefer personally the legislative, and uh, they they could say the legislative body, and from here after referred to as board. Yeah, they they well, they do that in the in section two point oh one. Oh one. Yeah. Of course, we use county commission here, uh, probably more than anything. Yeah. And most of my training was C test. You know, I went through the whole training. Yes, sir. Everything as I've ever known is the uh, county legislative body. They use that term all the time. Yes, Annette. Yeah. Yeah. I, you want to think about that, or yeah. that's something we need to get back with them on. I don't feel super strong about it, but I, I do like county legislative body I, it, for my preference, but it's not something, you yeah. know, I would go to go to bat over. That would be consistent with the state law mm -hmm. and the CTAS and usage. Do I hear a motion of that effect? I move that we uh, go with uh, the training we have with CTAS and uh, state laws and stuff and use county yeah. legislative body. Is that a motion? I'll second. It's got a second. Any other discussion? Yeah, I, I think it's. I think it'd be important to have that, and then be consistent throughout the document. I think it, it'll be easier for people to understand. Because you say the county legislative body, there's no question as to what that means. When you say the board, right? You know, that's. You have to really know the contents you're speaking in. Yeah. That could be confusing. And the general public is county commission. <laughs> yeah. they, they don't I very seldom hear board of commissioners. I do hear you know I see that in the literature, so, but yeah. But in terms of the average I, person, actually, I'm not sure why we aren't just referred to in everything as the county commission. You know, that's to me that just seems so straightforward, and that seems to be the common usage. Yeah. But in all the legal stuff that I read from Nashville, you never see. I never see county commission. It's always the county legislative body, or the county. Board of Commissioners. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, Ms. Annette, will you call the roll for the... We, we can use the voice of vote now. On this, the final vote would have to be roll call. Right. All in favor of 
using the what county legislative committee body. body. Yeah. Let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any oppose? Right time. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. The next one it comes down um, on Article Two, Legislative Branch, Subsection B, talking about the county audit. Well, this is, I, I think there's a little bit of confusion of the way that we do business here and the way they do business in Knox County. Um, you can no longer get the comptroller to approve a private auditor. That was an option. It probably still is in TCA to get the auditor. You can go out and hire an audit firm to do it. That's the uh, comptroller. That section of that statute says it's subject to the comptroller's approval. They no longer approve that. Um, although we're operating under a charter, but the way we do it here in Anderson County is we have an annual audit, okay, and that's conducted by the comptroller. Right. And uh, you see that uh, about this time of year, we start closing out the books and you start seeing some of the audit stuff co come through, but um, that's the way it's done here. If you want to change that, let me know. I'm sure we can go to a private, private auditing firm um, if the comptroller would approve it, but the way we do it now is we're audited each year by the comptroller's office. Uh, I think um, the way also is we have an auditor come here all the time and help Robbie or whoever's in that position. They can bounce questions off of. I know they contact me from time to time and that works out real good when you can uh, contact your own auditor and say, hey, look, we've got this question. Is, is this okay to do? Is this not okay? So I'd kind of like to leave it the same here as just using the state's um, the comptroller to audit our books. Any questions on that? Okay, that'll be the same. Uh, C is, um, this just gives us the authority to operate um, the purchasing system and you've already made a decision to stay with the 81 Act. Um, I believe what they're trying to say here is that at any time that could be changed, okay, by going with any of the other optional uh, forms, the 57, the 91, the 81, or the, uh, just the set of statutes under, um, I think you've got uh, uh, that public printing uh, chapter and contracts and Title 12, both have sections in it, default type rules, even if you don't um, uh, adopt one of the alternates, you have to follow those rules. But anyway, that's what they're saying here in C. Uh, the board shall establish rules and regulations governing all county purchases, sales, contracts for service, and disposal of surplus property. That mission or that, that task is done by our purchasing department. And that is set up under the 81 Act right now, which the mayor says there may promulgate rules. Well, that's done by the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee's job is, a couple of main jobs, is to point, appoint the Finance Director and also set policies. So the way it works here is the Mayor doesn't set those policies. She is one member on the Finance Committee. Is that the way you want to see it? Yeah, we want to, I want to, it should stay the same. Okay. That's and right. it should give us the flexibility if we decide but, to do a different act. But given the, so I don't given think the flexibility to, yeah. to opt into another uh, local option law. Yeah, Is it that should, the way you want it to should it? be like having a finance director under the finance committee versus okay. having the mayor in charge. All right. That's right. Because that's the way it is now. Yes, sir. Now, when we were under the 57 Act, the mayor had a lot more power to make those moves, but not under the 81 Act. The mayor serves as just one member of the finance committee. Okay. Um, I don't know what D is about. D is, we only have one exclusive franchise in our county and that's Mercy Medical Service. I do want to keep that authority in there um, for obvious reasons, but what that means is we can grant an exclusive franchise. That means that no other ambulance company can come into Anderson County without our permission to operate. And um, 
it sounds like a monopoly, but we're protecting ourselves from other fly by night operations that don't necessarily have the skill, the equipment that our people do come in here and low bid us on work. It happens <clears throat> all the time. Um, our exclusive franchise, I believe it's been on the books since 03 or 04, has worked very well. Uh, when the need arises to bring in additional ambulance companies, there's standards, and Nathan goes over them very closely, and he limits that to uh, just when there's an emergency. But um, we have um, um, granted a few waivers. Most of those are on convalescent transports, I believe, in the past. But that's what that's about. Well, but D says that this contract, this franchise, can't exceed 30 days or 30, 30 years. years. Oh, I was reading days. Okay, mm -hmm. 30 years. Okay. Oh, okay, now I feel better. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, by resolution, which shall not be subject to veto by the mayor, the board shall have the power to authorize borrowing of money and issuance of bonds, notes, and other evidences of indebtedness. Um, we, right now, we allow the mayor to veto mm -hmm. uh, indebtedness, and um, that that would be a major change uh, to not allow the mayor to veto indebtedness. Of course, you can come back and override it, but we're very fortunate. Our mayor uh, has gone out and looked at refinancing plans and brought them back to us, and uh, we've saved a lot of money in our interest rates alone the past four or five years. Yeah. So um, that's up to you, but right now their F is a pretty strong section. It's taken away the mayor's veto power of indebtedness. That's bonds and loans and stuff the county commission may pass. Um, do you want that in there? Do you want to keep it the way it is now to where she has or whoever's in the mayor's position has that ability to veto subject to a veto override the county commission? Is that a two-thirds of us yeah. uh, commissioned to override? No, it's simple. No, simple. no it's still a simple majority. Mm -hmm. My motion would be to keep it the same. Uh, yeah. Keep it the same, sir. Second. Is everybody okay on that? Okay. Okay. Um, Um, I is a little different. Uh, I allows by a two-thirds vote, we don't have this, uh, to authorize committees to have fuller power and authority to hold public hearings with power to subpoena witnesses and to administer oaths where necessary or desirable for the purpose of either one, gathering information necessary or desirable for the purpose of considering proposed board legislation, two, investigating any allegations of violations of this charter, ordinances, emergency ordinances of the board brought by either the mayor or any member of the board against any elected official or employee of the board. No such hearing shall be held with or without such subpoena power having been exercised except when a quorum of the board or any authorized committee is appropriate and present. What that's allowing um, to do on two-thirds vote is to have any board or committee have subpoena power and the ability to call a public hearing. Um, we've had cases in the past at county commission where it's never a problem holding a public hearing. Um, our ethics committee takes care of any violation of the ethics code but if you want that, uh, we'll leave it in there. But um, we've never had the power to subpoena witnesses um, at by boards and committees of Anderson County. Jay, I have a question. That's a big step. If we tell them that we didn't want any changes, why do they put stuff in you? I don't know where, where that came from. I'll find out. But that's not something we've asked for. Yeah, Mark, that is being, to me, uh, that was brand new. Mm -hmm. That's never been talked about in, any, in our meetings. I'll find out more about that. Okay, by resolution, the board may appoint members to those boards and commissions the board names necessary in the furtherance of its duties and responsibility of this charter. All such appointees which shall be residents of Anderson County at the time of their appointment at all times while serving on said board or commission. The board shall have the authority by resolution to remove and discharge such members for good cause shown. Um, 
that last statement is something we don't normally have. A few boards and committees have that, but that means that a, the board does have the authority by resolution to remove and discharge other members of committees of Anderson County government. Um, you'll see um, we've got a couple of committees that have problems getting everybody to come and have problems getting a quorum. And what this allows you to do is to go ahead and, and discharge that individual and seat another person that maybe um, will attend more of the meetings. We do have a couple of committees that that happens to all the time. That's a new power. We currently don't have it uh, countywide. So if you want to leave that in there, yeah, that's could, up to you. Could we change the wordage on there? Yes, ma'am. Just to make it, if they miss so many meetings that we could remove them at that time. Oh, no. So could we change the word? It's just mm -hmm. to say... It's oh. got now for good cause shown good cause, and yeah. for multiple absences yeah, over I three. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that's what it is for commission, right? No. Me. That's a... A lot of people think that, yeah. but um, I mean, we've actually had a, a commissioner state that twice in the past in open meetings, but um, I think... Uh, I know the fire commission has that, and there might be another board that has that option but if you want to leave that in there I'm going to adjust that language um, to develop the good cost shown a little bit more for excessive absenteeism without excuse uh, but it's up to you anybody have any problem with that to, to change what he's no as long as it's good cause I mean uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with you it's already got good cause shown, but I, I, I'm like Miss Beauchamp. I, I think we need to develop that yeah, a little I, bit I better. I think we have to be careful about limiting it completely because sometimes you can have situations surprise you. Like uh, maybe somebody's going on, they're paying for TV ads to land base the board because they didn't agree with something they liked. I think that would be a good reason to remove them from the, from the board. <clears throat> Well, but it, but I think you're you probably agree? running into a First Amendment issue right there. <laughs> so you got to be really careful yeah, with that. I mean, but. I'm, I'm, man, I'm just saying there, mm -hmm. there could be things other than absenteeism. Oh, of course. Uh -huh. uh, you know, they, how about they were just convicted well, that, of drug that, dealing in their, you know. That's a, a good one. Of, but that's, that's why they put good cause yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, see, that good cause, see, I, like, I had a stroke, and I missed three meetings, I think, in a row. And... Uh, uh, that's because I was that's paralyzed. A, that's a good side. excuse <laughs> right there. That's not a good cause to, to throw you off. But um, let me work on that with some wording there and let's see how we can develop that. A little more specific, but still allow for okay. general judgment. You're thinking more along the lines of conviction of a criminal offense or yeah. certain, something like that. Okay. Um, Or they, they moved out of the county. Well, you already said moving out of the county. They have to live in the county. Right. That, that's, they just embodied Tennessee code yeah. there. Um, I think we've got 16 members, eight districts here. And on um, the next section 2.03, um, they're wanting to call uh, seats A and B. We don't normally make that distinction. Are we going to um, have two now? Not if you don't want that. Right now, uh, the problem with designating them, say, 4A, 4B, is people think that, okay, is that a ranking system? Is that where I live? If, am I in District 4, subsection B? When really the way we have it now is we've got two county commissioners for the constituents to access. They're both of the same power. They both serve the same geographic district. But... Um, it's up to you. Right now they've got it with A and B. Um, we've seen that as the most senior person is A. Well, well, right now we just keep it the way it is now. You get two from District 1 through 8. They're all on le same legal footing. That's like I said, no changes. Got it. You know, if you, just if you had to see A and B, you have to run for C, A, or C. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's another really yeah. good point. Yeah. I, I think if you have three or four people run in one district, then the two highest vote 
get it. Mm -hmm. what, what that does when you do see A and B, to say you got one person. Well, yeah, you have to run for A or run for B. Yeah. Yeah, you have to well, and they actually explain that here. The last sentence says each qualified voter in any board district may vote for one candidate for each board seat. So they're further making that uh, distinguishment that Tim is talking about there. So we want to keep it the same exact way, correct, yeah. that we're doing yeah. it now. Good que question. Do It really doesn't say two per district in there. Uh, anywhere in it says 16 well, it says members 16 elected, members elected yeah, in yeah, you're yeah. right you're right it doesn't say two per I think it should shouldn't mm -hmm. it but I it do does say no more than two no that's state law and it no mm -hmm. more than three they've per. got three in here in one spot here well that's that's what the state is if you if you do 20 you can't have up to three in a a district right but you have um, to do yeah. 20 to do that. But you can have three districts with three commissioners mm -hmm. in Tennessee. That's legal. Yeah. You can have, there's, this is so strange, and I think it's subject to challenge. There is two counties in Tennessee that, or one of them has changed now, that will <clears> have <throat> uh, multiple county districts like ours, and one particular district has three members, the rest have two. I've always erred on the side of caution and said that's not representative of the one man one vote principle and um, I've gotten a little backlash from people that have tried to do that before but I think all our districts should have the same amount of representatives in them and not have one district come down here with one more vote for that district so um, um, that because it's county seat the district no the push was years ago was for district three to have three people and um, but uh, I, I'm not for that. The constitutional mandate is one man, one vote, yeah. and we tr need to try. It, it would have to, to have 150 percent of the population of the other districts to do that. No, you don't. As long as that district, okay, is plus or minus five with an overall deviation of ten. So um, that's that. It's really strange, but there is uh, at least one left that yep. still does that. Okay, okay uh, subsequent to the year, the board or by ordinance may alter or affirmative vote of two thirds membership of the board. Now, this is if, if the county commission wanted to change the districts, then they're setting down the default rules no more than 25, no less than nine, or separate office, not more than three members. Do you want that? Or if there was a push to change the districts, to change it from more than eight districts, 16 members. Would you rather that go through the amendment process to the charter? Uh, what they're trying to do is put the enabling authority in the charter uh, to allow you, the county commission, to change that during a redistricting uh, event like we're going through now. I'm looking at subsection two. Um, I think there's going to be some confusion uh, by the voters of Anderson County when they see that. But um, my thought when, I, when we were looking through this last year is if there was ever a change in the 16 members, eight districts, that would have to be done through the amendment process to the charter. Um, if not, if you don't want the amendment process to the charter to change that, then you would want to enact some enabling authority like subsection two. Okay, in, in 2A, though, it, it says that the, that the number of districts can't be less than nine. I believe the, act, the real number is three. We have eight right now, so we don't comply with this right now. We only have eight districts. Well, they're getting that confused right there. I can tell you where that came from. That, that's coming from the number of representatives. Exactly. No, it they, says. I know, but they've got it misworded. The board districts. They've got it misworded. If you look at the statute, that's the same numbers that appear there. I, I think, think they've got it messed up. Tim, did you have a question? No, no, I believe that should be three right there. And then in the next line, it's the Well, right now, as I see it, that's, that's totally moved. Not We're not going with that section. More than right. leave, it, leave it just like it is. That's exactly. What yeah. When we did redistricting, we had the opportunity to reduce the number mm -hmm. of commissioners to nine. Each commissioner, each district has to be within 5%. Mm -hmm. The total right. population. That's correct. 
But if you if you just had one, you'd have to go to nine commissions, nine districts, because you got to have nine on the board, right? That's right. No fewer than nine. Yeah, you can't. so the board can't be less than. So nine. you'd have to have another district, or or make three districts and have three di three yeah. per district. Okay. Which some counties are Just like it is. You need a secretary. You need to be full time. In that. Well, what we're doing right now is complying with the state with the state code on that, right? But what I'm saying is that in that two A, that should read less than three. We're not even talking about that. That's moot. We're striking that whole section. Oh, that whole section. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, the, uh, the regular terms of the board shall be four years. On or before every 10 years, um, we do the redistricting. That's the same thing we're operating now. Right. Okay. Um, okay, this board member's salary and compensation, <laughs> um, that's a big change here. 20% um, of the circuit court judge in Anderson County, that's roughly... Um, around 190,000. <laughs> so um, do you wanna uh, keep it with the county commission uh, that has the ability to change that salary? Uh, what is it, 875 or something like that? Chuck, do you know what it is? It's not much. Uh, Chuck got the raise approved. And <laughs> uh, that means uh, like when the state officials get 2%, county commission gets 2% but it's much different when you're dealing with 875 a month versus some 2 of these 2% of nothing is nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But anyway, that was a good step, Chuck. Uh, we appreciate that. But uh, right now- yeah, I that's, got four bucks to check on that. Yeah, but <laughs> right now, unless you want to change something, um, I think that would be a drastic um, change and uh, may draw suspicion from the voters as to uh, the intent of this body. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. We don't I've never, needs to stay in the same I think yeah. so too. There would be a huge move to say this is a move for the county commission to get a big raise. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's what Knox County goes off of, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think they get more than that because they get about 32000 a year. The um, plus office. They've got the, uh, they just referenced the ouster statute here on that one comment block there on 2.07. That's the way we operate now. Um, the vacancies, got to have them, um, they've got 60 days in here. Uh, we try to, um, select those vacancies within 30 but I can see why that 60 days is in there the state statute allows 120 um, yeah. so that's a little bit of a change from state statute the state statute yeah state they've got it here 51104 uh, allows us to do 120 days you never know what's going to pop up there uh, but most of the time, we fill vacancies on the county commission pretty quickly. Um, that that should be done because no district should be without without full representation. We've actually held off on major measures that are coming to county commission till we get a full body. For um, okay, uh, there's let's see. Okay, it says basically the board has the ability to exercise its authority by resolution. We do that now. Ordinance, of course, that would be, that's part of the, one of the main features of the charter form of government is ordinance or by emergency ordinance. We can do emergencies um, in a couple of different situations by resolution, but that's what there's, he's basically putting down here. We have three areas to um, exercise our legislative authority here county commission does by resolution ordinance emergency ordinance as herein set forth I think that's fine I don't see a I, we don't have the ordinance feature right now but if this charter did pass we would automatically have the ordinance feature would, 
I got a question. Yes, sir. When you add an ordinance, you're, you're changing the charter. No. No, uh, that's an amendment to the charter. Okay. Ordinances and amendments are different. Yes. Okay. And the amendments don't necessarily flow through county commission. Most of all those were come through the charter commission um, as requested by the people of Anderson County. But it has to be approved by county commission. Yes, it does. County it's got commission, that in there. Two thirds mm -hmm. twice. That's right. I think you helped with that section. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, it's uh, this is following Tennessee Constitution. Um, Basically, one subject, single subject rule. We do that now. We have the title on all our resolutions. I know the ones that I do, we always have a title line. Heck, that was a bar question years ago. <laughs> so most people will remember that. And then the number, we do that now as it is. Um, date of adoption, we do all this. So that's, that's, there's nothing changed there in 2.09 in what we do, except we will be able to do ordinances in subsection one. Okay, moving on. Um, this section, I'm all the way back to the next comment section. It's in seven, eight, nine B ordinances. And this is the adoption of an ordinance. Um, it's uh, it's got to be published five days prior to the meeting. Um, made available to all members at least 48 hours prior to such meeting. You would hope it would be in the agenda packet. And the public would be able to have that for five days. I think I'm going to strengthen that a touch. Please. Um, I think the public should have at least five days notice on this. Um, or maybe even more, y'all think about that. This is talking about adopting an ordinance that will have a penal provision attached to it. So um, we may want a little bit more notice of that than the five days and to the public and 48 hours to an individual member. Um, I have a question, Jay. Yes, sir. What, uh How many days notice uh, they have to give if they're going to change uh, the zone, re rezone or Thirty something days. like that? 30 days. It ends up being more uh, because we're a regional planning commission and our Clinton has, is a regional planning commission. So the way the state law is, is Clinton has got to approve all our changes in the zoning resolution and vice versa. We have to approve theirs. So it's 30 days, it ends up being more. Well, I, I can understand that, but uh, an ordinance is important as well. Absolutely. I mean, it needs to be longer than... Are you leaning least, towards 30 at days? At least two, two weeks or 30 days. Okay. That's my opinion. I'll, I'll make a motion to that effect. Which effect, the 14 or the 30 days? 30. 30. Motion made for 30. Are you a second? Second. Got a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Let me know I'm saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, the one exception I would like you to carve out there is an emergency ordinance. Um, yeah. There could be some situations that we need to act fast, and we found that here in the past year or two with COVID, um, we might not be able to um, get that 30 days notice. But for all the ones that have penal consequences, uh, I think 30 days is, is really good. Um, yeah, on page seven, it's like 2A. It says that the emergency ordinances have to meet all the same requirements to be on the agenda right. as a regular ordinance, and that we can't. You ha you have to have a special provision for emergency ordinance. Yes, sir. That you can move ahead with a two thirds majority. Uh, if two thirds the, of the commission agrees, mm -hmm. it's probably needed. Yes, sir. But this this makes it a requirement. So that 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 two A part needs to be modified to accommodate. Got it. Fast action by the commission. Yes, sir. Got it. 
Uh, it's not effective until the 15th day, and that's fine, except in the cases of emergency ordinances, and it spells that out. Yeah. Um, talks about ordinances imposing fines or imprisonment. The violations are enforced by the Sheriff of Anderson County. Um, I will probably have that amended to allow animal control and codes enforcement to issue uh, citations. As you know, uh, um, animal control issues citations uh, pursuant to TCA. That's not in here. Uh, our codes enforcement people, Chuck has been pushing an idea that I, I just love for years. When I have codes enforcement cases, I have to t basically prop prosecute those as a lawsuit in Chancery Court. It would be much better if they just went out and wrote a ticket and then I show up in General Sessions Court right. once or twice a month and prosecute them in General Sessions Court. Um, they get really drawn out in Chancery Court. I was in one, on one last Friday that we filed in 2015. So uh, you can imagine how upset the neighbors are at this uh, structure that is just needs to come down right away. But uh, that is something that I'd like to change and I appreciate you coming up with that idea many years ago. But um, we'll fix do we, that. Do we need to pass anything on that? Or? Uh, to allow uh, codes enforcement and animal control to write ordinances. Yeah. I make a motion to include animal control and codes enforcement. Second. Motion is second. Discussion? No, Jay, will that give you the authority to handle it in general sessions? Yes, it, so it's got right? general okay. sessions here. Okay. Um, All in favor? No one's saying aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Right, thank you. So we got that change. Um, They have added some stuff. It looks more like Knox County to the veto uh, power of Anderson County. Given that 35 days, I'd like to come back and revisit this. She doesn't have any comments, but I think we need to mirror exactly the way our process is now and what we follow is TCA on the veto. Um, <clears throat> that was the intent. That's exactly right. This 35 days um, is going to carry us into the, not the next county commission meeting, but the following after that. So yeah. uh, that really holds up government while we're waiting on that 35 days to expire. So I'm going to let you take a look at this. I'm going to redraft some stuff and bring it back. But the way I'll fix this section is just to mirror it off TCA. Okay. Okay, we've already addressed that Article 2, done that. The salary will be the same as it is now, correct? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Any questions on these first couple? That's all we have. Any questions? That's all I have for you tonight. Um, I would ask you to go through here, although there was some of these things uh, don't have a comment block, there is a few changes, and I just realized that. Um, I thought when they sent this to us that the comment blocks were for the changes from the way we were doing business. There is a few here that are a little bit different, so I need to go through this, and um, I'm sure Steve We'll sit down and go through it with us. And anybody else that gets a chance, please read through these. And um, let's make sure that nothing sneaks by. And uh, I just found two different issues right there is, that is not the way we do business right now. And that's not the intent of this body. I know it's not. Any questions off these? Uh, any questions about the process we'll be facing in the next four or five months? Be really similar to this, what you see tonight. The meetings will be a little bit longer. It would help if um, 
they get these to us at least by the agenda deadline I'm asking for that so that you'll have them for a full four days and um, maybe five days um, and be able to digest it and come up with some questions okay thank you so much yeah, for your time yeah, yes sir yeah, there, there's a part in here this is on the uh, right article 2 2.02 a at the very end it says whenever a public or private act of the state of Tennessee purports to authorize the county court, the board, or the mayor to perform any administrative executive act or function, and such function shall be performed by the mayor, except as otherwise provided in this chapter. That that's confusing to me. You're at word two point oh two? Two point oh two other powers A Mm -hmm. And then the last sentence in A starts with whenever any public private act. It, it talks like it's, it's re, it looks like it's really wide scope, except then it says executive mm -hmm. act or function. Any administrative or executive act or function, then such function, act or function shall be performed by the mayor except as otherwise provided in this chapter. And I, I don't see any exceptions. I'd like to know what they're speaking it's, to. I'm, I'm just not sure what that's about. <laughs> I'll find out, but well, I'm, I'm, we need to go through this a little bit more careful. Any other questions? Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, any old business? New business? November 1st be the next meeting. Anybody have anything else to come before the Charter Commission? No. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Without objection, we're adjourned. No.